No touching. No that whole That's a turn. Or a high five. <laughs> that would be on the YouTube. It is inappropriate, Jane. That's inappropriate. That sounds like middle school. Turning your back. And we need it. <coughs> oh, you know what? I don't think I should. He does, he does good. Does good to pray in. Hold. Rachel's side is about to jump off. Yeah. Um, no. He was. But, um, but he was I don't bishop. hand it to you. So he's outside. I don't want you. Okay. Upside so down. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the March 12, 2020 City Council meeting for the City of Sierra Vista. The first I call to order, Ms. Adams may have a call, please. Mayor Rick Mueller. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Mitchell Gray. Council Member Wim Benning. Present. Council Member Gwen Calhoun. Present. Council Member Sarah Pitko. Present. Council Member Carolyn Umbry. Present. Council Member Christine Wool. Present. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Mrs. Adams. Uh, next is the invocation. Tonight, the invocation will be led by Councilman Benning. Hmm. We, can wait for the, we can wait for girls to get in. Please stand. Let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, during these troubling times that we find ourselves in with certainties and the way ahead, certain things, and where we're going, give federal, local, state, local officials the guidance, the wisdom, and the strength to do what's right and do what's the best thing for the people and community. As we come together tonight, please bless us, make sure our decisions are wise, and we do goodwill for you and for our community. And at this time, before we say amen, I'd like to take about minutes and please say a silent prayer. One minute, one second, <laughs> just a moment of silence. For those that can't be here, those who be here, who want to be here, uh, we can start now. Lord, for bringing everyone out here tonight. Bless these loving of us. Amen. 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 And uh, tonight we're blessed to have members from local Girl Scouts, Bay Troop 419, Junior Troop 104, and Cadet Senior Troop 1224. And contrary to your instructions, once we do the pledge, I want to sneak around and do the do proclamation for Girls Week before you leave, so at least you'll be here to hear it, okay? Is that okay? So, we're pleased to have the Pledge of Allegiance tonight by, by the Girl Scouts of Sierra Vista. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Public for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Did you see the folks? Thank you. 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 It's my honor and privilege as mayor of the city of Sierra Vista to offer the full proclamation <clears throat> on behalf of the good citizens of Sierra Vista. Whereas Scouts of the USA is the largest leadership organization for girls in the world, and the number of Girl Scouts has grown to over point seven million members. And whereas Girl Scouting helps girls develop their individual potential, relate to us with increasing understanding, skill, and respect, and provide a foundation for sound decision making. And whereas Juliet Gordon Lowe organized the first Girl Scout troop on 12, 1912, 
The first Girl Scout cookie sale took place in 19. And whereas this year marks the 103rd year since the Girl Scout program began and celebrates, excuse me, whereas this year marks the 103rd year since the Girl Scout cookie program began and celebrates the 108th anniversary of the Girl Scouts of the USA, now therefore be it resolved that Frederick W. Mueller, Mayor of the City of Sierra Vista, Arizona, we hereby proclaim March 8 through 14 to be Girl Scout Week in for the City of Sierra Vista. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the City of Sierra Vista to be affixed this the 12th March, the year of our Lord, 2020, and Independence of the United States of America, 233rd, signed Frederick Muir, Mayor. And may I put this to you? Congratulations. Ladies, we'll move on to item number one, acceptance of the agenda. Ms. Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the agenda for the Euler City Council meeting of March 12, 2020. The approved written. A second. It's been written. Second. Any additional corrections to the agenda? I didn't say anything. Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Zero. Uh, we now move on to the city manager, Rupert Lucic. Thank you, Mueller, members of the council. Our next regularly scheduled work session is scheduled for March 24th, 3 p.m. here in the council chamber. Uh, of primary interest, that session will be a beginning of the development fee uh, discussion. And then, of course, the uh, next regularly scheduled council meetings for the 20th to 5 p.m. also here in the council chambers. Uh, project night, the City Hall model project uh, bid opening is scheduled for March 27th, and then the big old uh, driveway uh, votes are due on March 26th, and of course that's to uh, annex an agreement with big old uh, tire. This morning I attended uh, Powers of the uh, Board for CCOM. Uh, a number of them were discussed, I'm pleased to report that uh, hiring has picked, and we are uh, very, very near to a full complement of uh, employees there. Of course, uh, there is a fairly extended training area that's in with that, but uh, that process is going uh, very well. And at the bottom of the discussion, what we proposed it for CCOM, uh, and we have a cost share primarily with the county and our other uh, subscribers uh, for that. So we worked that for a while this morning, and that will butt back uh, to JPA board for uh, a final vote. And then, of course, I'll bring that to the council and the budget session to discuss the proposed uh, uh, CCOM budget with you at that time. Uh, I think it'll look uh, pretty good, though. Uh, finally, tonight, uh, I want to address the uh, coronavirus. Um, uh, under state law, uh, the state of uh, Arizona designates uh, key health departments to be lead agencies in any particular uh, uh, emergency uh, situation uh, th that exists uh, right now, government governor has declared. Uh, that being said, uh, we do take uh, and and look to uh, BDC, uh, the state uh, Department of services, and the county department for most information there. Our website uh, we have linked it to them. However, uh, we recognize that a lot of people uh, rely on the city of Vista for information, so we will be standing up uh, our own page regarding coronavirus. Uh, it will have much of the information from the agencies that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we are uh, working closely with the county health department. Uh, Mayor Mueller and I attended uh, last week at uh, the county uh, facilities uh, to go over where the county health department is. I'm pleased to report they are working very well with uh, particularly our first responders, uh, health agencies, and uh, the uh, senior facilities here in Sierra Vista and the county, because those are the ones that are uh, primarily uh, receiving the bulk of the attention uh, due to the risks uh, involved senior citizens during this. I think it's also important to know that our community know that city staff also prepared uh, in the event an emergency uh, occurs here. Uh, we've been meeting this week in terms of getting information out. Uh, following all the protocols uh, that are mentioned for purse hygiene here, uh, that's being uh, emphasized with employees, as well as making sure that if anybody uh, is ill, uh, we are uh, providing uh, free uh, teledoxes for those employees uh, in the event uh, uh, they are feel uh, they are being sent home immediately and uh, you know, for nine Medicare right away, we're providing it uh, for free for full part-time employees. 
So that's a uh, way. Uh, we also are very prepared. Our first responder is prepared, as I mentioned. They're working with County Health Department and others, uh, making that a priority. Uh, as uh, people are aware, the Scottsdale had a fire crew go down in quarantine last week. Uh, we don't have numbers here to be able to afford to have whole crews go into quarantine. Uh, so uh, our staff is very well prepared in terms of how we spot these things and are acting uh, accordingly. So far, we have zero cases uh, of coronavirus virus in uh, Chiefs County, and certainly people aware. Uh, it's very transparent information. Everybody is aware if a case comes up, and certainly we uh, should information uh, if we get it as well. Uh, right now, we'll see an emergency uh, here at Lowy. Yes, so while we are looking at events and facility and those things, what we do to improve personal hygiene and cleanliness in those, and you will see see that around the various facilities. Uh, we're not to the point where we need to declare an agency here locally or uh, uh, dealing with uh, those tough things in terms of and facility closures. However, we are prepared uh, to do that in event that that occurs and we'll get that information out uh, to the public as well. So uh, just so everybody to know we are prepared. We'll be putting out information. Uh, we want to be the purveyor of that information. We will do that and uh, we will get through this. I I'm quite confident uh, that we are prepared. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Petucci. Questions from Mr. Petucci on his report? Seeing none, I want to item number two. Ms. Pacheco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm at the consent agenda consisting of the City Council regular meeting minutes of February 27, 2020, and resolution 2020 appointment of Jeff Nelson to the Environmental Affairs Commission said term to expire December 31st, 2021, be approved. Second. It's moved and seconded. Any comments, discussion? No. No, sir. Well, Mr. Okay. Nelson's here. Thank you, sir, for being here. Any other, any other comments? <coughs> okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We'll move on to item number three. This is a public hearing item. Ms. McLaughlin. Mr. Mayor, members of council, this is the first of two public hearings that we held in developing our annual action plan, which essentially are running application to HUD document, documenting our intended use of community development block grant funds during the upcoming program. Uh, the annual action plan deadline uh, for SIN is 45 days prior to the start of the fiscal year by May 15th. We intend to present the draft plan for a third day uh, review at your regular meeting on April 9th. Uh, then we'll come back to you, final consideration with any comments that we receive on May 15th. Our submission to HUD is done electronically using the Federal Integrated Disbursement Information System and can be done the following day. According to HUD, our formula allocation for Program 20 is $271,810, which is roughly the same amount we received last year. As related to you at the work session, this received no applications outside agencies this year. Uh, we're in the second year of our consultant plan period, carrying out public infrastructure and public facility projects in the low to moderate income target is, was rated as a top priority in the consolidated plan where two thirds of our program fund be allocated. Our staff recommendation is to use all of next year's uh, CG funds on implementing the remaining of the Eddie Year Park Master Plan at 1224 North Avenue. Uh, the use of CDB funds for demolition of the former public works complex predicated upon the property into a beneficial community use. Uh, furthermore, the artificial turf fields are expected to generate more use and activity and need for parking. Uh, the property is in, is in an income eligible neighborhood and will turn a blighted lot into an entity, providing a walking path that connects the Sear Park to Soldier Creek Park with some enhanced landscaping. Uh, the project will be designed in house using engineering staff. Uh, the project will be in line behind the uh, Soldier Creek where plaza improvements uh, are approved for funding in this year's annual action plan. Limiting use of CDB funds to a project will reduce administrative effort, consequently no funding requested for administration. Uh, if you agree with the recommendation to prepare the draft annual plan to include this project for consideration on April 9th, or April 9th, your first meeting in April, and that'll take in questions. Matt, just for this, restate this for the point, we mentioned it at uh, the work session. How many site agents apply to for this year? There were uh, no requests this year. Okay, but the public needs to know before we get to the discussion. This is, an open, this is a public hearing. Are there members of the book that would like to address us? I haven't received any any count sheets. I see no moving forward, so I'll close them to the public. Uh, discussion on part of the council. Okay. And again, we have a we have a, another hearing when April 9th. April 9th. We'll bent the draft for a 30 to public review. Okay. okay. Any questions? No. All right, that completes item number three. We now to call to the public. I don't have any applications for the call to the public question. Is there a call to the public? Anything from the audience? Seeing none, 
We'll go on to comments and request counsel. Ms. Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I just want to say that I see some council family members in the audience, and you guys are super cute. Yeah, I'm counting you too, Miss in the row. Oh. <laughs> and we're super happy that you're here. Um, secondly, all I have to say is um, let's wash our hands like grown people, <laughs> and everything will be okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Miss Mrs. Pacheco. Okay. Um, I want to say congratulations. The girls are gone, but I did want to congratulate Girl Scout Week. I lived in Savannah, Georgia for a couple years, a long time ago. That was a big deal, <laughs> Yeah, the Girl Scout, the Girl Scout house, you know, Julia Gordon, those houses there, the Girl Scouts all over Savannah, so that's exciting um, to have Girl Scout Week, and I have duly supported by eating a lot of cookies <laughs> uh, this month and um have to give a shout out to girl scouts too because i didn't bring the um i did not bring the troop numbers but uh, several girl scout troops held um the pup who wanted to support them but maybe didn't want to bring the cookies home brought their cookies or to our pantry and so we were able to send the cookies home kids in need. Um, so that was a really neat project by Girl Scouts in the last month. A couple different groups worked together, and we sent out like 400 boxes of Girl Scout cookies to families in need. Uh, just last, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we send out 400 bags of food every so it's like one free. We were able to get from the community girls' cookies from the community at home. Send home Girl Scout cookies with all our kiddos as a special Valentine's Day treat. Um, so that was really cool that those got troops that. Um, I wanted to make one comment, well, two comments on that note um, about the coronavirus and subsequent, you know, just seeing flooding it, the news, um, and all of the, you know, all of the information surrounding it. First, big thank you to first responders who are on the front lines, and our nurses and doctors and Doctors' offices are not going to be closed and can't work from home, right? They aren't going to be working from home. They're going to be on the lines um, seeing these cases and talking with people who might think they have it but don't have it or do have it, and that those professionals are exposed. So thank you, thank you to our medical professionals who stand up and um, are on the front lines. And the other is to, um, you know, we were as a partner agency with um, with the Southern Arizona Community Food Bank. This is really troubling for food banks. And so just remember that this is a hard time when there's a panic like this. Um, all the folks who rely on that weekly or that hourly wage, um, you know, are a pick away from not having food in the cupboard, and they will not have food in the cupboard now, right? So they can't go to work and wait tables if they can't, you know, be at work, you know, in their hourly retail job or whatever it is, um, then they don't get paid. And now that family doesn't have food in their cupboard. And so that is going to be a fault. We know it's going to be a fault. We're already seeing a wheat distributed day at our pantry. We saw our request go up. Um, you know, we're not the only ones. Tucson um, is saying the same thing, that this the panic surrounding the virus is pretty bad. We're seeing people being sent home from their jobs. We're not sick. And now they don't have a paycheck and they don't have a way to pay for their bills. So be compassionate when you think about all the economic fallout from everything that's going on, because it's real, that is real. So, like, that is real, that we we are seeing that, that people are going without food. And um, we are going to see our requests go up and needs go up in our community. So uh, it's just it's just a reality. So think about that. Um, and, you know, maybe our smart people in the room coming together and think of ways we can address that. If there's more and more, you know, economic fall, we pay attention to those needs in our community. So, and on that break, you know, our schools aren't closing. They are kind of closing. It's spring break this next week. So, enjoy spring break. And last but not least, sorry, I talked a lot tonight. Okay. Tonight at Buena is the All Sid Choir concert. 7 p.m. Choirs from Cass and Berean and Lehman Academy and Buena, of course, and CMS and Wachita Mountain Elementary School. So, all the kids are going to you know, take their turn singing tonight. So, full house night at Buena. So, do you want to see them all sing? Then you know where to be. But. Thank you. Ms. Humphreys. I don't even know what I could add after that, but um, you're right. There is a panic. It was a ghost town coming today on Dallas Fort Worth. There was like, there were no lines. There were no, nobody sitting to me. It was nice. very odd. Um, but I'll have a trip report for everybody, uh, hopefully, in a couple of weeks. And um, I didn't shake hands with anyone at all. There was no hugging. It was strictly. 
no handshaking conference. It was a very quiet conference because uh, everyone was careful not to even clear your throat in the room. It was like, or you get ostracized. Um, it was that kind of, but um, we did get to speak with our senators and congresswomen and a few aides. And uh, I have information to share with you about that. But uh, I'm so happy home and on a bunch of normal people. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't <know> that. That <laughs> was out Thank on you. the record. Ms. Wolf, did you something else to add here? I'll let you clear up, let you clear up there. Uh, Mr. Bing. Uh, he's smart, too. I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Um, what was I going to say? I have it written down. First, always a when the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts come visit us, and I'm glad we were able to do that tonight, and I got some great peers and got talked to them, so a little blessing. Um, I want to talk quick and thank the staff and everyone that helped put on the Fry Boulevard Improvement Open House second one. We had Adams here. You might be able to correct me. But I think it's roughly 20 plus people came for the entire event. I got to the morning event and didn't get it to the afternoon. But from the beginning, and I on council, everyone else in that group, we heard negatives and positives. But I think to the most part, and A, Plan B, it was all positive. I'm glad we were able to guess what it looked like, what traffic pattern looked like, what it looked like, and get information out there to the public. And, uh, Say on behalf of myself, I'll answer any question I can. If I can't, I'm the expert to go to. So for the people in the community, just asking, uh, we have to make a difference, and this is, I think, where we start. The second thing I want to talk about quick, because I don't want to keep going. Family members are here. My daughter took down from AU, fear for uh, fear for God, had to get a plug in there. But for spring break extended, thank you. Uh, I want to let everyone remind everyone that the 21st of March is the league opening ceremonies. We're also going to have the field dedication at Domingo, uh, Domingo Pies that day also later on in that evening, the 21st of March. Uh, so if you can make it out, it, uh, I think the, the results of the Snyder Project, and I went to soccer, excuse me, last night at Wednesday night at work session, Tuesday night after work session, to kind of get an idea of the, the multi-use paths, everything we're talking about. And it's just, it's looking amazing down there. So if you haven't seen it go out, I know Sears opening, beginning, beginning of April is the opening of Sears, April 1st. So uh, if y'all get to that too, it, it's long ago, two improvements are for youth, two sporting events, and uh, I'm, I can't see the results. Other than that, I'm, I'm glad our council members are back D.C. Uh, be vigilant, everybody, with the coronavirus, it's scary, but make sure the one we're doing is putting actual information, not what I heard from the person I said, because that'll get just something on more. So make sure talking about it, you're not the good things, and, and we'll do this. I know the thing. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Cow. Thanks to Mayor. First of all, the important item, I to thank my granddaughter, Taya, and my grandson, Jason, and my husband, for coming to tonight's meeting. It's good to see you there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a couple other things. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Nelson, on the EAC. Look forward to working with you. You're here. Uh, I want to make a comment about a couple of community meetings, too. We have a group called Service to Be Healthy. Meets, uh, I don't have the information in front of me. But uh, it, this group is really looking at... Um, Sierra to being a healthy community. The city is uh, with that. They're doing some work. They worked on the uh, hydration stations. They've worked on helping people get to uh, the farmer's market to buy um, local um, fruits and veggies. And uh, they continue to look for ways to demonstrate to the community how important healthy eating, healthy living is. I also want to come about Carmichael Neighborhood Association. That also, uh, we had a great presentation uh, last Thursday night from Adam Curtis, who talked about the... Um, yeah, I was going to tease him and say I remember. <laughs> but he had a very good presentation on Census 2020 and how important it is for us all to be cut. And uh, it's also available to other groups to help people re understand and, ex and be involved in um, running to Census 2020 and encouraging your neighbors, friends and neighbors, and all folks to run into to be sure and be counted. How important that is to think that we receive from the federal government and state government for our community, that the more of us they get counted legally, correctly, brings more funds into the community. And Adam will tell you more about that, the details of that. And, oh, I want to comment that in addition to uh, the environmental affairs and working on very important sustainable issues for the community, Cody is also Cody is Commission on Disability Issues. They're also working on Forest Guide for people with disabilities that will have available to us pretty soon. And um, it's impressive to watch them um, Commute well with each other and work on the projects. And um, that's about it for this one. Ms. Mayor, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to start by also mentioning Girl Scouts. In fact, still send cuts to our, our service members overseas, and the local troops do that as well. So that, that's a great thing. It's always great for the Girl Scouts here. Uh, 
I want to talk a little bit about uh, our visit with uh, on Friday that went and I, and we actually had the fire chief and the deputy fire chair as well. Uh, they gave a very concise, cool-headed presentation and provided critical information that is on the county website. So people, please take time to read that if you're concerned. And to me, there's a difference between a concern and the word panic that's been used up here a couple of times. We are all, we all at this point should be concerned about this health issue. Mm-hmm. Now, the government has done a couple of certain things. Despite what we may be reading on the internet or what we be hearing on TV, the whole idea of stopping travel from China has basically helped flatten out the curve of people coming here with the virus and the ability for them to transmit that virus to others. Recently, the president announced we're doing the same thing with Europe because now that the now that the epidemic has been going for a while, it's lessening in it's lessening China and it's growing more significantly in Europe. So it makes sense for the EU countries to also have travel ban. That's a prudent step at prevention, not panic. A con- it's a concern, and we take a prudent step for prevention. Don't be panicked by the fact that the governor has declared uh, Arizona a health emergency. That's not that's a preventive measure because now, without having to go through uh, federal bureaucracy and red tape at a critical time, he already has access to a number of funds and things that he can do to ensure that the state's health posture is better than it would be if he had to, had to slow down things. So they're taking responsible preventive measures. The county website is another responsible preventive message, a method. The state reviewing our emergency plans. We had a we had a fire a couple years ago, and we basically had an emergency plan. And since the fire court, we did a little tweaks to make it work better, but it also it also applies to health emergencies. And we joined it up, as Chuck explained, with the county health department to be able to take care of our our uh, our first responders as well as the elderly who are more vulnerable. And we will continue to be active on that, active in, in planning. And we will, as we have events, we will go through a process where we decide based on the reasonable level of threat whether that event is continue or not going to continue. And we'll do that with us as we go forward. And that is, again, a preventive measure. It's not a panic measure. So, folks, we're not in a situation yet here in Sierra to, where we need to worry about panicking. We need to sit down, take a, take a deep breath, figure out how this is going to affect us and our loved ones and our neighbors, and then do the right thing very calmly, very reasonably. And this is not a time to panic, but a time where we take positive steps to ensure that we minimize any impacts of any any virus, whether it's flu or, or corona or anything else. Again, the best thing you can do, uh, wash your hands properly. Make sure you cover your mouth when you cough. Clean surfaces that may have licks on them effectively. I use a handkerchief on a regular basis. I recommend that and change that very often. Well, there are a number of things we can do to make sure we minimize infection, and that's what it is. It's an infection. So no need to panic yet. We have prudent meds we can take. We're all adults. We can help those. We can help those that we love that may not be uh, that may be more vulnerable or maybe small small kids. But there's no sense in panic. That's not a word to use. We take appropriate action for the appropriate situation. And we with the Sierra so will continue to do that. And as we have changes the situation, we will work with the county, the state, and the feds to mitigate as much as possible those issues. So I'm confident that this is this is just a blip on the radar screen, and we'll get through this. Oh, so it should be it shouldn't be a big issue, but we're aware we're taking effective action, and it's the key thing is effective action prevention of the spread of the disease. So, with that being said, I hate to be all dead serious like that at the end of the meeting. But it's important for people to realize that. If there's nothing else for the council, meeting is adjourned.